Thank you to Squarespace for supporting this channel. Whether you need a domain, website or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Today I am looking at the Leica TL2 and I've come to Bristol. Where is Bristol? It's next to Bath. You, here I am, next to the Bath. It's the UK summertime, which makes it a perfect time to be flying some balloons and for me to take photographs of those balloons, not just some normal balloons. One problem, it's British summertime. Let's be totally honest, I didn't like the Leica T, like a TL, because it looked just like a freshly cut CNC block of aluminium, aluminium that hadn't been quite finished. And the big kick in the teeth was the fact that the Yi M1 looked vaguely similar to the Leica TTL. I'm gonna try and block those images out of my mind today. You know what? I don't think anything's happening today. I wonder what's in Bath. All right, enough of the Bath puns. Bath is a city. No, this is the bath. Now, many, many years ago, people used to travel miles and miles just to come here to wash their asses. Some time ago, Romans built a fancy spa here so they could chill out and de-stress or something. These days, people travel miles and miles just to come here to wash their asses. Anyway, like a TL2. This has chamfered edges. This looks super sexy. This looks like the finished product. And in typical Leica fashion, they've taken off more stuff poppy uppy flashy yon why ruins the Bauhausness of it probably but thankfully like I haven't taken off anything more than that I mean I don't know what else they can take off this carrier it has two buttons two dials it's uber minimalist the buttons don't even have writing on them it does however have a maxi 3.7 inch touchscreen but surely that's all you need to take good pictures anyway so how good is this camera well as they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating i don't have pudding i have a camera so let's go shoot one thing about like a tl2 is that it's a little bit slippery i mean it doesn't have a grip 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 grip, grip, grip. Oh, what was I saying anyway? Yeah, 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 take photos. Ergonomically, it feels great, although some might not dare to go strapless, as you might feel a little bit worried about that grip or lack thereof. All right, so maybe ergonomically, the camera is like a slippery egg, but in terms of focus, pretty sticky. It's quick, I mean, it doesn't feel like the quickest mirrorless camera I've ever used, but it's good. It's snappy, those 49 focus points are lively, lighting up and latching on with speed. Holy crap, there's a lot of tourists here today. What is he dressed like? I guess the people of Bath like wearing funny hats. See what I mean? I've always liked the way that images look straight out of camera with Leicas, and the TL2 is no different. So what I've actually come to Bristol, not Bath for, is to photograph the balloons. It's the International Balloon Fiesta. As I mentioned before, not the small balloons, not the helium balloons, the big hot air balloons. But the weather is urinating all over the party right now. I mean, it's quite literally urinating. Numerous clowns were doing a Frankie Goes to Hollywood on multiple days. And when it wasn't, it was too windy. One morning, a couple of balloons took flight. I was ready and waiting. Then the Balloon Fiesta organizers tweeted that it was too windy to carry on. Who? But I had one last hope. First of all, sorry about this really weird point of view. Uh, I just plonked the camera down because I'm a bit of a rush. It's 7 a.m. I'm going back up to that observatory to try and get the balloons. This is my last chance to get the balloons. All the other times the weather's prevented them from taking off. There were plenty of people enjoying the view. Not this one, this one. Unfortunately, the balloons were flying in the opposite direction. With a wide angle zoom and this resolution, I couldn't exactly crop the crap out of it either. Now it shoots 24 megapixels in a raw DNG file format. I mean, 24 megapixels is pretty much standard these days. I love the DNG raw files. Just chuck them straight to Lightroom, Photoshop, boom. Now, of course, when you've got a camera with only two dials, two buttons, a lot of the things is accessed by the touchscreen menu system. But it works quite well. 
And I like the fact that you can customize menus to your liking. You can just add stuff like this. And of course you can use the touchscreen to focus. It's pretty quick. I mean, in low light it does slow down noticeably, but this is better than a lot of other mirrorless cameras out there. It won't focus. A little bit hunting there. Hunting there. <sighs> or you could look at the files instead. 24 megapixels isn't groundbreaking, it's enough. But the 14 stops dynamic range is pretty impressive. You could pull out details from bits where there seemingly weren't any. I compared it with a Sony a6500, also APS-C 24 megapixels, shot with the same settings at the same time. The Leica is sharper, but that could be the lens. The TL2 does have a more pleasing colour, however, and retains details and highlights a lot better. I mean, this was a Karen that I wasn't really expecting to like that much. I mean, I didn't like the T, I didn't like the TL, mainly because of the way it looked and the sharp edges. But once I've got this in my hands, it's really quite good. It's likeable. Of course, there can be other cameras that do a similar kind of thing. You get 24 megapixels for much less. This does cost a fair bit. But look, that's not to say this is under spec. I mean, it does a 7 FPS burst, 20 FPS in electronic shutter mode, and it shoots 4K video, and it's mirrorless camera. Even Canon don't have that at this price. No price, any price. Surprisingly, the in-body electronic stabilization does a decent job of helping keep the handheld video that little bit steadier, but it's not all good news. You can do manual focusing and you've got peaking, but the thing is, once you've hit record, that peaking disappears completely. Yeah, that continuous autofocus isn't that great. Oh gosh! And once you've hit record, you can't even change aperture. Alright, so obviously you don't want to change shutter speed anyway, but those dials are completely useless. Now what about a rolling shutter? Rolling shutter is noticeable, but not to Sony levels. The 4K files appeared sharper with the Leica, although it seems to have been sharpened a bit too much in camera. But good looking files. Shame there's no flat picture profile. There's no mic input either, which would be disappointing for video shooters, but the video feature is more of a pleasant addition to a great stills camera. It is all about the image, the improved low light, definitely good up to ISO 12500. The dynamic range and crispy files make this a worthy update too, but it's not just an update, it's a very worthy mirrorless camera. It focuses on the core basics and makes the whole process incredibly slick. It's always going to be judged by its price, but it's not like you buy a Leica because you just want a mirrorless camera. Still, with the performance enhancements, at least there is depth beyond the red dot with the TL2. Thank you for watching and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for creating beautiful websites quickly and easily, which is why I chose Squarespace to make my website. We have a plethora of templates to choose from with 16 new designer templates, award-winning 24-7 customer service, a simple way of transferring domain names over, Squarespace is ideal for those who want to create a personal website or for e-commerce. You can start a free trial today and you can get 10% off your first purchase with the code KAI.